Welcome to the video for 14.3, Predicting the Direction of Redox Reactions. You need to look at textbook pages 204 to 207 to help with this video. So our learning objectives for today are to know that standard electropotentials can be listed as an electrochemical series, which is something we touched on last lesson, and to use the E0 values to predict the direction of simple redox reactions and to calculate the EMF of a cell. So, in order to work out whether a reaction is feasible, there are three methods you can use, and it doesn't matter which one you use, just find the one that you're the most comfortable with and makes the most sense in your head, and make sure you use that. So, the first method is looking at the electrode potentials, and we can use them to decide whether a reaction is feasible or not. So, if a pair of electrodes are connected, then electrons will always flow from the more negative electrode to the more positive electrode. Now, Notice that we don't say from the negative to the positive, we say from the more negative to the more positive, because sometimes you'll have two electrodes which have both got positive values or have both got negative values. And in that case, the electrons will go from the more negative electrode to the more positive electrode. So therefore, by looking at the signs and the magnitude of the electrode potentials, we can use them to tell us whether uh, which direction a redox reaction is going to happen in. So we're going to go for, the best way of doing this is to look at an example. So here's an example of lithium and copper. So we want to know which way round the reaction is going to happen. So if you look in the electrochemical series in your textbook for lithium and copper, you will find that lithium electrode potential is minus 3.03 and copper is plus 0.34. So we said on the previous slide that electrons flow from the most negative electrode to the most positive. So in this case, the most negative one is the lithium. So if you think about electrons are flowing from the most negative electrode, that means that that's creating the electrons. So that means the lithium one, which is the most negative in this case, is going to reverse, so it's going to flip. So instead of being Li plus plus electron minus going to lithium, it's going to be lithium going to lithium plus plus electron minus. So that one is going to reverse, and the copper one is going to stay the same. So what that gives us, is written below at the bottom half of the slide. You've got lithium to lithium plus plus electron minus, and you've got copper two plus plus two electron minuses goes to copper. So that's the reaction that's going to happen. So the reaction that will happen is lithium plus copper two plus gives copper plus lithium plus. Now, of course, that's not balanced because you've got two electrons to copper, so you'd have to put some balancing in there if you were to write a formal equation for it. It's important to remember that the number of electrons doesn't affect the voltage. Quite often students will, in this, if they saw an example like this, they would multiply the lithium voltage by 2 to make sure you've got the same number of electrons. That doesn't happen. You just simply, to work out what the overall voltage is, you just add those two together. Now, the important thing to note is that when you look at that lithium one, we have reversed the voltage. And we've reversed the voltage from a minus to a plus because we have flipped the equation around. So any time you flip that equation, you have to remember to change the sign on the voltage. Okay, so that gives us an overall voltage of 3.37 volts. So that reaction will happen. So lithium will react with copper 2 plus, give lithium plus and copper. The reverse reaction is not feasible, so that's not going to happen. So we'll look at another example here. And the example here is, is the reaction Zn2 plus plus copper to give Zn plus copper 2 plus, is that reaction feasible? So this is a typical exam question, giving you an equation and asking if it's feasible or not. So all we do for this is we write out our two half equations, and we get our values by looking in the electrochemical series in the textbook. And you will find that zinc is minus 0.76 and copper is plus 0.34. So we said on the previous slide, electrons go from the most negative electrode to the most positive. So in this case, zinc is the most um, negative, copper is the most positive. So the zinc equation is going to be the one that's going to be flipped. So you're going to have zinc giving up electrons to give zinc 2 plus. The copper will take 2 plus will take those two electrons and become copper. So that gives us those two equations there. So you've got zinc to zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus to copper. Again, we've flipped the sign on the zinc electrode because we've gone from 
zinc 2 plus to zinc is minus 0.76, so therefore the opposite equation zinc to zinc 2 plus is going to give plus 0.76. So the overall voltage on that cell then would then be 0.76 plus 0.34. So that's going to be 1.10 volts. So the overall reaction is going to be zinc plus copper 2 plus gives zinc 2 plus plus copper. So that means if we look back at our equation, that's the, the equation at the bottom of the slide is the one that's going to happen. So the reverse reaction is not going to be feasible. And our question is asking, is the reverse reaction feasible? So it's asking if zinc 2 plus would react with copper. And we've just worked out that it's not feasible. So in an exam question, if this was an exam question, you'd say, no, the reaction is not feasible. So the second method of doing this is just to use the electrochemical series as it's written. And if you remember from the last lesson that you've done, the best oxidising agents, if we write them in this, this way, the best oxidising agent is bottom left-hand corner. And the best producing agent is the top right-hand corner. So the best oxidising agents, remember oxidation is lost, the best oxidising agent is the one that's going to be better at removing electrons. So it's the one that's going to grab those electrons better. So that forward reaction is going to happen more readily for the electrode potentials that are at the bottom, that are the most positive. So what this means is that if you list the electrode potentials out in the electrochemical series as we've got here and I've shown in your textbook, then the lowest electrode is going to reverse the higher electrode. You have to be careful if you use this method because sometimes in exam questions they don't list them in order. So you'd have to then write it out yourself or make a note of which one is in which order. So if we to look at our example again, one of our examples, again the last one we did, zinc and copper, then if you look at that, then copper is lower in the series, so that's the one that's going to reverse zinc. So your overall equation would then be zinc plus copper 2 plus gives zinc 2 plus plus copper. So that tells you which one's going to happen, so you can say whether it's feasible or not. Right, method B is just to use the E0 values to predict feasibility. So if you work out the E0 values of the cell as the equation is written, then if you get a positive E0 value, then that reaction will happen. In practice, it's usually feasible if the E0 value of the reaction is greater than plus 0.4 volts. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. So here are our learning objectives again, which were to know that standard electrode potentials can be listed as an electrochemical series, to use E0 values to predict the direction of simple redox reactions, and to calculate the EMF of the cell. As usual, if there's anything in this video that you don't understand, then go back and watch it again, or read the textbook, or look at online notes, and make sure you understand this before you come to lesson.